big pig. You can't breathe. Believe you can breathe. Last night, probably seven, eight o'clock, got everything set up. I had a nice meal and we had a nice campfire. Time for some breakfast. First time with a camp chef. Toasting our bagels. Hope you all can hear me okay. Got a new camera, new audio system. Got a little lapel mic now. So hopefully you guys can hear me fairly well. Hey, we're set up here at Crane Hill Ranch. We're having an absolute ball. State of Michigan finally opened up and we could get out and do some camping this weekend. So we just did a short weekend up at Rodney, Michigan. It's just kind of east of Big Rapids. And uh, thought we would talk about a couple things. While I'm out here, thought we'd shoot a little video and talk about if I were to build a new hiker right now, what are five things that would be must-haves on my list? So let's go over it. So the first thing would be the toolbox. I absolutely love the toolbox. Let's go take a look. So looking at the toolbox, we've got the large model. Um, it is slightly recessed in here on the sides. As you can see, it doesn't quite show on either side from here to, to the edge which is fine uh, we did that more for aesthetics didn't think we needed a bigger one would i go xl next time i might consider the xl but this one fits everything we need i see so many times teardrop campers don't have any kind of storage box or anything on the front and i just i don't know where they put all their stuff this thing becomes just a big dump for everything utility. So everything from the jacks to the extension cords to um, boards to help yourself level, um, different kinds of locks, cables, your battery system. It's just absolutely necessary in my opinion. But we got the stabilizers in here. I got a toolbox. I have a full video on my channel if you're interested in everything in there. I did just add this power disconnect onto the top of the battery box, but absolutely love it. Um, put my own light on there, and toolbox would be definitely a number one thing that would have to go on uh, another build for a hiker trailer. So the next item would be the roof rack. Um, the roof rack is definitely a must in my opinion. You've got, I mean, as you can see all the stuff I've got up here, I've got a place for two bikes. I've got the 230 awning room that I've added onto the side of the roof rack. That is extremely handy. I absolutely love it. Um, my straps are running here to my 270 awning. So everything runs through and around and attaches to the roof rack. I think the roof rack is definitely a must. So when you've got it all set up, this is our 270 darts yawning. Butts right up to the 230 shower room. We still have plenty of room for the bike racks to get on top. And then there's the full darts on the other side. So definitely a must have for any hiker trailer build would be to have the roof rack system. Uh, if you're wondering this white stuff, this is just a reflective tape that we put on the back to be more visible going down the road. My third thing that I think would be a must have for
for a, for a uh, hiker trailer build would be the Max Fan. Um, in my previous trailer, it was a pop-up camper. I had just the standard Fantastic Fan, and it was fantastic. It was a good fan. But the advantage of the Max Fan with the multi-speed to be able to reverse the airflow and pull the air in versus pushing it out is a huge, huge win in my book. And the ability on a rainy night or rainy day to get good ventilation and be able to still run it in the rain. That was probably the number one thing that I went with a Max Fan. Having that rain cover on there and then the ventilation ports on the bottom is a huge win. You can run the fan whether you've got rain or sunny conditions, you can run it all the time. I absolutely love it. So we accessorized ours with a light ring, which is nice. It gives plenty of light for the inside of the cabin area, the interior. And I don't know if you can hear that, but it's running right now. Probably can't hear it. It's that quiet. Now, obviously when you ramp up the speed, it's gonna go up in speed, but it is Perfect white noise. So another option that I would absolutely have to have for a new hiker build would be the large propane tank option. I absolutely love this thing. We do roughly 20 to 30 nights uh, summer in the hiker and camping, and we have not run out of propane yet. Now that's probably using it twice a day on our trips we do a lot of cooking on our stove so it will go a long time this is 11 pound tank and they got the special mount that hiker built with their logo cut into it it's a nice mary they were the ones that when we talked about our build for placement where to place the propane tank this is absolutely a phenomenal setup i love having the tank on this side of the trailer um I married it with the table. I got the table option and you can see you can put your stove on there. Something new we added this year was the Everest Mountain Series Camp Chef Stove. Absolutely love this thing. It's a great stove, but that would be a must have for a hiker trailer build. Would be going with a bigger propane tank for cooking. I would have to have that again. So last but not least, uh, things I would be a must have for a hiker trailer build would be the 270 awning. I, I just can't speak highly enough of this. Some people like their straight awnings, I get it. Um, they do add-on rooms for kids, that kind of stuff. It does work really well that way. In my opinion, the 270 is the ultimate awning. I really do. Um, I'll stand back here and kind of show you. So you can see my whole galley area is completely covered. I have coverage all the way across. I have no issues. With coverage, I have no issues to the front. And this particular model is the Darchi. Uh, I don't know if Hiker can get it. You're gonna have to check with them, but they have a model that's exactly like it that does the exact same thing. I think it's just as good a build quality. And that, um, the Darchi, the one thing I like about it is it covers all the way to the front to the door. Your door area getting in and out on a rainy day or rainy night no problems. So let's take a look. Just run the straps, attach it to the roof rack to tighten it up. It literally can deploy in about 30 seconds, but you have complete coverage. So here's your door area. Just to give you an idea, it goes probably from the door out to that corner pole is another five foot. I can actually access the toolbox. The toolbox would be right on the edge of the awning if you had to quickly get something in a rainstorm. But Everybody says, oh, what about this gap? This gap is not a big deal. I mean, it has to be a really, really hard downpour for a lot of rain to hit this and bounce through this little gap here. It has to be a torrential downpour. You're probably in your trailer at that point and you're probably not worried about that gap. It's not an issue at all. Um, there's a couple of adjustments on the back of this awning, so it allows you to adjust it a little bit higher or lower uh, on the roof rack itself, depending on your height. So I like that feature. We did one minor adjustment when, once we got it. Um, I love all the tie-off points. 
has excellent tie-off points. So I made some, um, this is the glow cord. So you can see it in the middle of the night, flashlight hits it. It's got a little bit of a tracer in it. Those ropes work excellent with this thing. And it just has incredible coverage. The coverage to the back is what sold us. Um, once Wendy got back here, she does a little prepping on the table with food and starts cooking something up. Doesn't matter if it's raining or not, you're completely protected. We did do the wall option too, but the awning to me is totally worth it. It is pricey, but you're gonna get what you pay for, guys. Um, I just can't say it enough. Everybody's had that rainy vacation where it just rains all weekend and this will give you plenty of coverage so you can dodge under here. Whether you get the wall option or not, you'll have a place to get out of the rain and, and be able to still relax and enjoy your vacation. So to me, having the large coverage 270 awning is totally worth it. That would definitely be on any build that I would have for a hiker trailer. So you can see there is a gap here. It's about, eh, with the, my hand and <laughs> it is not an issue guys. Um, some people put like a foam pool noodle. You can get something that's fat, about the size of a paper towel in there to kind of protect from rain coming down. It has to be, like I said earlier, it's gotta be a torrential downpour for that rain to be hitting that so hard that it's coming down on you or splashing on you, that kind of thing. So that's my top five, guys. What's your top five? Let's discuss in the comments. Like always, like, share, and subscribe. We will see you on the next video.